Hi guys. So it turns out that the turtle is a huge symbol of the cosmos. So we're going to talk about that today and find out exactly what that turtle means. Um, and we're also finally going to see mother come through. We've talked so much about the spirit and the spear, the male line of descent, um, and the maybe the fatherly aspects of the spirit. We're finally going to see some of the motherly aspects of, of the spirit come through. And of course, we have to have a perfect balance of those two aspects um, if we want to understand harmony, okay? So the turtle, um, this is from like Wikipedia or something. The world turtle, also referred to as the cosmic turtle or the world bearing turtle is a mytheme of a giant turtle or tortoise supporting or containing the world. Also, you guys, the Maya saw Orion's belt as a huge cosmic turtle. Well, that picture above is a belt buckle. So I assume that the Maya had the correct idea about Orion's belt. And so we're probably talking about that too. The god Shock cracked open the back of the cosmic turtle with a lightning stone. That reminds me of our fiery dart. And of course, um, we're understanding that the turtle has been on his back and he's flipping over upright now and he's standing on his own four feet. Remember, we talked about in the last video, okay? Look at this, watered and nurtured, okay? So now I start to feel this motherly side coming through by the hero twins. Who's the hero twins, guys? It has been many things for us, but um, it's actually been in the constellation of Gemini that we see the twins and the north node which is the tortoise shell standing upright is where the north node is it's in Gemini right now okay so I thought that was very interesting um, the maze gods grew from the crack in the back of the turtle which is now represented by the ball court all across the Yucatan okay I don't know what that represents, but if you want to, you can go look that up. Um, so we're going to find out what the Spirit is telling us about the turtle, but I was drawn to Job 38, and it says, where were you? He's talking, God is talking to Job. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Who has laid the measures thereof, if you know? Or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So, we understand that we represent morning stars. We're together on our bridge, singing together, crying out together. This has also occurred at Pentecost. And now we see when the foundations of the earth were established, the same thing was going on. The morning stars were singing together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So... We were just talking a couple videos ago about the pillars of the new heavens and the new earth. And I said, I believe the foundations are being set right now for that new heavens and new earth. But you guys, I also get the feeling that we were here. We were here. God can ask us and we it's coming back to our memory that we were here when he laid the foundations of the first world. And it's similar to what's happening now when he's laying the foundations of the new world. All of this, all of this should be deja vu to us. Okay. We're here now at this time. We were there also before Job's time when the foundations of the earth were laid. Okay. So again, morning stars is popping out to me and Revelation 22 talks about the morning stars also. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root 
and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Again, you guys, beginning and end, root and offspring. So th this is what I'm seeing. You know, time is circular. It's already occurred, but it's it's like we're repeating history almost. That's the feeling that I get, okay? So I went to research morning star in both Greek and Hebrew. In Greek, it means early, early dawn, at daybreak, early in the morning. The root is the word mountain, which is very odd. And then the root of the word mountain was a bird, a cock, or a hen. A bird as rising in the air, a hen or female domestic fowl, a hen. Okay, morning stars at their root, not the offspring, but at the root of the word morning star here. We have the idea of the hen. A hen. A chicken, a fowl, whatever you want to call it. Rooster, cock, bird. Okay? Hebrew. Morning means morning break of day to seek, inquire, consider... Seek or look for, consider or reflect. And the root is to plow, break forth, inspect, admire, to care for, to consider, search and seek out, to cleave, to open, to plow. Armentum, as if armentum, oxen. Oxen. Now we have this idea that the morning stars, the ones who rose early to seek out and inquire, they were the ones who were plowing the land, okay, which is the very beginning of, of it, before the seeds were even planted. You need to plow the land first. And the, the animals that do that are the oxen, okay? So inspect diligently, look at, to look after, and to take care of. So again, this nurturing aspect that I'm, that I'm feeling, okay? So I went to look at all the derivatives of this word for oxen and plowing, and it means to seek and inquire, of course, to let a search be made. So in reading this, I saw that Jesus would go out after one sheep, leaving the 99, because he didn't want to lose the one. Let search be made. Okay? And then another derivative of this word, again, cattle, herd, oxen, ox, herd, head of cattle, bull or cow, plowing, armentum, armentum, which means oxen, I, I guess, in Latin, breaks up, plows the ground, oxen, cattle, herd, herds and flocks of sheep, of sheep and goats. Okay, so we are talking about morning stars, which are objects in the sky. There are lots of suns out there, okay? But they are being compared to animals, turtles, hens, oxen, sheep, goat, bull, cow, animals, okay? That's how, at, at the root here, that's the idea we have. So, if you look right here, see this word? Under bull or cow, plowing an ox and sheep and goat, B-O-S. B-O-S. This is our shield. This is the boss shield. It, it's in the definition, and we had it. Or the embossed the embossed, the shiny, glossy back of the tortoise shell, boss. We've already had the word. So I went to look up boss in the dictionary. To be master of or over, to manage, direct, and control. A protuberance or roundish excrescence on the body or on some organ of an animal or plant. Again, this protuberance of the tortoise shell. Okay, to ornament with bosses and boss to emboss. Look at what it means. In plumbing, to hammer sheet metal as lead to conform to an irregular surface. Does this sound familiar to you? It should. 
because we've had it many times. It's the firmament right here. The root word of the word firmament by hammering with thin sheets of metal. Beat, make broad, spread abroad into plates. This is the hammering into thin plates is the root idea of the word firmament. To stamp, guys, that is the embossing, that is the seal that we've been seeing. So we have an idea here that the tortoise shell is the firmament, okay? It's the firmament. And what is in the firmament, guys? As we know, it's the constellations and the stars. And what's up there? Oxen, cattle, sheep, birds, humans, all kinds of depictions of humans and animals in the firmament, in the tortoise shell. Boss, a familiar name for a calf or cow. Origin of boss, master and foreman. Okay, so as we are aware, Adam was given dominion over all the beasts of the field and every flying thing in the air and everything that was in the sea. Adam was given dominion over it. In fact, in Genesis Two, he does he also name the stars in the firmament? Okay, what what this is reflecting, you guys, is that the idea that the beings on earth are reflected in the stars. Okay? We are literally siblings. We are mirrors of each other. And the Lord formed Adam. Okay, these are the generations of heaven and earth when they were created. And the day that the Lord God, remember this being Adam, made the earth and the heavens. Because God, God, Elohim, was resting on the seventh day back in the garden. And Adam's given dominion. And then the generations of the heavens and the earth are created in the day that the Lord God made earth and the heavens. Okay, so... How do you make, again, the earth and the heavens? It's by naming them. It's by speaking forth, and it becomes established. This is how it's created, literally, okay? Okay, so, guys, th what I see is that anything happening on earth is reflected in the heavens, as above, so below, of course. Um, but but it's so much truer, <laughs> than we've ever been able to sink our teeth into, okay? It's just, it's your counterpart, literally. It is your twin flame, literally. The stars. And Mother Earth, and Mother Earth. Anything in Mother Earth, anything in the stars. It's because you're one. You're one with the entire universe, okay? So back up to Job 38, it's, it says, The morning stars sang together. It, just like we're doing on the bridge, just like we were doing in on Pentecost, okay? Overcome, ringing cry, to cause to ring, tremulous, stridulous sound. Vibrate the voice, piercing cry of a bird or ostrich. This is also the cock's crow, the cock-a-doodle-doo, cock, cock right? Rising early in the morning. And the hen, caca doodle doo. That's what it is. Okay. So along with us, because we know that we've been crying out also, and the wolves cry out also, so does the hen. It's, it's the same thing. We're all doing the same thing here. Okay. And then I had this verse come to me. It's, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stones them that are sent to you. How often would I have gathered thy children as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Hen, again, hen. 
It's the same root word as the word morning star and mountain, probably from an obsolete word, oro, to rise or rear. This is rearing children. Rearing children. The hen gather her brood under her wings. This is that nurturing that I'm seeing in this teaching. The motherly aspect of the spirit. Now, this is what I see. If you have pets in your home, you are very nurturing and kind, caring. You take care of them. You watch over them. You're very gentle with them. This is the sentiment that I get. That when we were given dominion over the animals, what do you do to your flock? You go out and get the one and leave the 99 because you don't want to lose even one sheep. You want to be a good shepherd. You want to care for them, tend them, make sure that they're not harmed, exploited, suffering, sick, any of that. This is our role as the mother God. So... Guys, I am so seeing that many of us, what we've had is this masculine idea of God, okay? It is so time to connect to the feminine aspect of God, Elohim, the plural, that nurturing side. How do you really feel about animals? Do you say you like animals? Like every single child on planet Earth likes animals, right? Do your actions match up with your principles? Do your actions match up with your principles? It's the only way to get in touch with that feminine side is to make sure that whatever you're doing, the actions you are taking in your physical life, match the words you are speaking. Oh, I love animals. Oh, animals are so cute. Oh, look at that little baby lamb over there. Isn't it adorable? Um, you know, Okay, you know what I'm getting at here. Make sure, just make sure. And I am being told to be unapologetic. Okay, so let's get on with the facts here. Four feet in the last video. I kept likening us to the turtle. And then I said, now if we're standing on our four feet... But I was talking about us as humans, but I kept saying four feet. I think I said it two or three times, okay? And what kept coming to me, guys, is the table of the showbread, the table of the showbread in scripture. Okay, so this was a table that was laid out before like the Holy of Holies or something on the altar of God, something like this. And all these loaves every Sabbath day were brought to God as an offering from the priests. And nobody was supposed to eat of this showbread or something like that. Okay. So I went to study showbread. And of course, you're going to find it all over scripture. So you can look there. But in the dictionary, it sums it up for us. And I was satisfied with this summation. So I didn't have to bring you the Hebrew and Greek. Okay. Okay. So what they say in the origin of showbread Martin Luther's translation of Greek, artoi and opoi, something, loaves facing. In fact, this is more of the Greek, the Hebrew definition. It is. It's the face. And then these loaves or masses of dough or bread. Okay. And it says, it has the word panim, which is face in Hebrew. Loaves in front, loaves Facing, here in Hebrew, lechem panim, bread of the divine presence, literally bread of the face. What I understand from this is face to face, face to face presence, as if you're sitting at a table and eating a meal. Once again, this is what mothers typically do for us. Okay, sit us down at the table, have a good meal. It's a face-to-face -face gathering at the table. This show bread. 
Okay, once again, the word show brought me to a motherly aspect, and I won't bring you the gory details, but show means to cause or allow to be seen, exhibit or display. I thought that was important. Also, show, ladies, you'll recognize, it's the discharge that indicates that labor has started. So, I am, we had a lot talking about the um, intercourse before and the maturity and being at the ripe age. And I think that pregnancy has progressed far enough that now it's bearing fruit and bearing children. And that's the point that we're at. Okay. So the show, it means your mother, ready to be a mother. Okay. And then bread, it, the idea is the word loaves. Loaves are a shaped mass of baked bread, any shaped or molded mass of food. Mass is a body of coherent matter. Okay. A mass of dough. Origin of matter is the word mother. Mother. So definitely pointing us to the motherly side of the spirit. Finally, I've kind of been waiting for it. Okay. Look at table in Greek. Trapeza, a table, a table on which food is placed, an eating place. The table in the, the temple at Jerusalem on which the consecrated loaves were placed, that's the showbread, equivalent to the food placed upon the table. To set a table, the table or stand of a money changer where he sits exchanging different kinds of money for a fee and paying back with interest loans or deposits. Okay. The other root word of the word table. For, for, tesares in Greek. The root of the word tesares or a different root under the word table in Greek, on foot. The root of this word on foot is a foot. Four feet. Four feet. Four feet, four feet. So, I go to look up table in the dictionary. The tablets on which certain collections of laws were anciently inscribed... The tables of the Decalogue. Guys, the Decalogue is the Ten Commandments. Okay? And then the laws themselves. Guys, what's the turtle doing? Four feet on the turtle. A group of persons at a table, as for a meal, game, or business transaction, a smooth, flat board or slab on which inscriptions may be put. Laws are written, accounts are kept, ledgers are scrawled, senses are taken. A flat horizontal slab or board, usually supported by one or more legs on which objects may be placed. Related adjective, mensal. So I had two words to look up here. Board, the origin of board. Board, table, and shield. The shield is the turtle shell. The shield is the table. So the tortoise represents the four pillars are his feet, his legs, four feet, and then his shield, his back, represents the slab or the board of the table. Now the, the turtle is turning over. The turtle is turning over. So as we have talked about before, the table of the money changers is turning over. This was given to us again in the idea that everything is being accounted for. Everything is being tallied. Every step you take is being recorded and measured. And this is how you determine your destiny now. An account is being taken. Okay. And it's all written on this table. The table is turning over. So we once had other people in charge of the accounts, okay? That's all going to be changing over. But look at the other idea of the board. It's the plate. 
Now, this is the sh thin sheets of the firmament, guys. So can you imagine how huge this scope becomes? The entire turtle, this is the firmament so far as we know it, but it goes even deeper and we're going to see that. The firmament, the turtle shell, shield, is turning over. Huge karmic cycle. It's just a huge karmic cycle. That's all it is. The thin plates of the firmament are turning over. Right here, plate. But what also is turning over? The food at the table. The food at the table. I do not use my YouTube channel to as a platform for my veganism. I can only give you what the spirit is telling me unapologetically, okay? You work it out for yourselves, and I just have to give you what the Spirit's giving me. Um, the plates are turning over. The food on the table is turning over. Okay. Mensal. I had to go look up mensal also of relating to or used at the table. This is, I thought it was interesting, a benefice set aside for the maintenance of a priest or bishop, especially for board. So as in room and board, as if, um, mensal also, it's got to mean monthly here. Um, so like a monthly stipend for your plate, for your manna, for your showbread that you're eating at the table. Okay. Origin of mensal pertaining to a table c mensa okay so i got a kick out of this mensa also called the altar slab or the altar stone okay now picture our tortoise shell on four legs and four feet his back embossed back is the firmament this is the altar of god the firmament the altar of God. The flat stone forming the top of the altar in the Roman Catholic Church. But look at this. Besides this, I just put this in for our entertainment and joy. Here it is. Mensa, an international fellowship organization for people with IQs in the top 2% of the general population. Okay? Wouldn't that be great? Origin of Mensa. Table. Symbolizing the original concept of the society... A round table where no one has precedence. This is huge. Please pay attention to the origin of the word, to the root. God is taking us back to the ancient past, what was originally the plan and design that we strayed away from, but now are returning to. Okay, a round table where no one has precedence. So mom is setting a meal at the round table in the firmament. Everybody in that firmament is invited equally. The roundness means that you will sit face to face with all the characters in the firmament. All of them, the humans, the fowls, the oxen, the sheep, the scorpions, the whatever's up there. It matters not to mom. She could care less what her children look like. They are all gorgeous and beautiful to her. Every last one of them. Gorgeous, beautiful to her. This is how mother feels. Okay, we were told we were knights, right? The fatherly side, the knights. The, is this the origin of the knights of the round table? So interesting. Okay, so we're turning over the tortoiseshell, turning over the tables of the money changers, you guys, but turning over what's on your plate also. Turning over what's on your plate. Mom has none, no violence in her. Um... Only nurture and tender, loving care. That's what this is. It's that tender, 
tenderness. That's mother. And there, there is nothing of the spear in her, okay? Okay, so remember that side when you're dealing with people, children, that you have dominion over. Okay, table in Hebrew is shalkan, shalkan. Table in Hebrew, okay? Table as spread out. Once again, the stars of the firmament, the hammering thin plates of the firmament spread out. By implication, a meal, a table. A table so called from being extended and spread out. Here we have the table of the showbread, the altar, those who eat at thy table. The root of shalkan is shalak. And I thought, oh my God, it's not shellac in Hebrew. It is shellac in English. Shellac, translated lack, thin plates. Thin plates. It's the turtle shell of the firmament. Lack has been purified and formed into thin sheets used for making Varnish. What's the varnish? That embossing, that glossy finish, that glossy finish of the stars. What does that mean? To shine, to glow. The stars, these are the morning stars. They're all sitting at this table. Okay. The shiny, glossy embossing of the shell, the sealant, that's how you're going to know. The sealant, they have the approved, authentic, attestation that they are true. They are sealed. They are sealed, guys. Okay, again, the root of firmament in Hebrew is the sh thin sheets of metal, plates, stamp, sealant, varnish, embossing, turtle shell, shellac. So I said, okay, what are we talking about here? Now, are we to have dominion over the animals, are we the animals? Because the morning stars are the hens and they are the goats and the oxen and all of that. Well, the spirit just kept reminding me of the mirror. We're all one. So if mother hen feels this way about her brood, you also feel this way about your brood. And what am I hearing right now? You have bought the farm. You have bought the farm. How are you going to care for your animals? How are you going to nurture your animals? Okay. Okay, so in contemplating all this, um, the Spirit said, you are a peculiar people. Well, God knows that that's the truth. Okay. So in you can find this peculiar all over the Old Testament, but it's also in the New. This is in the New. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Peculiar. That which is one's own, belonging to one's possession. What does possession mean? It means that Lord, that master, that foreman, that boss above. It is actually dominion. Okay, it's the, it's the Lord over, and then you, you are possessed, you are God's possession, but also you are Lord now. You've inherited your lot, and now you have dominion over your lot too. These are your possessions. How do you treat them? A people selected by God from other nations for his own possession. Other nations, yeah. This is goim. Do you remember? It's Gentiles. Do you remember what Gentiles means? Animals and humans. Animals and humans. We should look it up. Goim. It's, it's in, um, I think it's pretty, I think it's in the Greek translation of the word Gentiles. Okay. Okay. What does it mean in Hebrew here? No, this is Greek. 
um, peculiar. To be over and above, abundance, plenty, riches, wealth, property, belong to one's possessions, a people selected by God from the other nations, Gentiles, for his own possession. Possession, property, valued property, peculiar treasure. Now, this is the Hebrew, peculiar treasure. Feminine, passive participle, and an unused root. Wealth, jewel, peculiar treasure. Jewel. So remember, guys, we have, we're going to get to an idea here. Remember what our energy centers are. They are like gemstones. We've talked a lot about the gemstones, a lot about diamonds. These are the jewels of God. And what do the jewels within our system produce literally, physiologically, our energy centers are growing and spreading out, right? And as they do this, they mimic or are exact in their construction. They represent, they look like magnesium, the um, geometric shape of magnesium, okay? We've talked about the milk of magnesia in our energy centers. It calms the body of its acid, right? Now, acid has a lot to do with that masculine side, but it's, but it, it, this is not a negative thing, okay? But mom comes in, the milk of magnesia, mom, comes in and calms that acidity. You need this. We all need this, okay? It calms the acidity of the power that we have. Okay. Property, this is the root in Hebrew of um, peculiar. Property, wealth, private property. Peculiar in the dictionary. Strange, queer, odd, uncommon, unusual. You have to go to look no further than my channel to see what a peculiar people we are. And I mean that with all the love in my heart that I have. This is beautiful to me because we represent the word made flesh. So I love you guys and I'm so proud of all of you. And I mean it. And we are so strange. We really are. All of us. There's not one that isn't. So uncommon, unusual, distinctive in nature or character from others, belonging characteristically, usually followed by two. Okay. Um, particular parish or church that is exempted from jurisdiction of the ordinary bishop in whose diocese, diocese it lies and is governed by another. So we are in this world governed by another completely, for sure, possessed by another, okay? Origin of pe peculiar, and you can't make this up. It's flock, farm animals, cattle. We are a peculiar treasure to God. Okay, wait. We're, we've got more to go. Wait till you see. This is so. He. This is how Jesus looks at his flock. This is how Jesus looks at his people. It's so obvious. We need to have that nurturing side. Okay, get in touch with it, you guys. Get in touch with it. Let it grow. Let it come out of those energy centers. The mom. Okay. Definition of peculiar. Look at this. Designating a star or galaxy with special properties that deviates from others of its spectral type or galaxy class. Now, my word on Monday said the Milky Way. And I, I you guys, I just follow the spirit along. It's not like I knew that this was coming, that this study was coming. Okay. Okay. Galaxy. I have to go look up galaxy. Any large and brilliant or impressive assemblage of persons or things had no idea that galaxy could be defined that way. Origin of galaxy. The Milky Way. See galacto, as in galactic, galacto, you guys. A combining form meaning milk. 
used in the formation of compound words. But guys, lacto alone means milk. Ga lacto means God's milk. God's milk. The, the tortoise shell and all the animals around it. it. We're talking about the Milky Way. What should you be drinking? Milk from mom, from the nurturing side of the spirit. Okay. Milk, as above, so below. Directly reflected here from Mother Earth. And she has dozens of milks that she produces where you don't have to go through a, pr- a middleman and hurt the middleman in between and exploit the middleman. You don't need that. Okay? Mother Earth produces for us everything that we need. Okay, guys, that's it. That's what the Spirit's saying. Love and nurture, kindness and tenderness. That's what the Spirit's saying. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.